Well, my name's Kenny Hogg. I got a Carmen Gia. I'm going to fix it up for my mama Mia. It's going to look real nice, y'all. From hood ride to good ride, all right. It's Kenny Hogg. Howdy. Welcome. Going to get started on a new project here. Actually, I already got started, but I deleted the first video. So now we're going to catch up. <laughs> All right, we are working on a 1965 Volkswagen Carmen Gear convertible. Now, there's a lot of history in this car. My daddy, Boots Hog, bought this probably in like the early 80s or something and he and my mama drove it around oh by the way it is Father's Day 2015 so I'd like to dedicate this video to my daddy Boots Hogg his real name was Buford Floyd Hogg Jr. and uh, he died when I was a, in a teenager you know there was a big explosion a big accident I don't really know what happened I was too young and they won't tell me and I'd like to dedicate this video also to my mama slash daddy, Maylene, no, May Pearl Hog. <laughs> I can't even say my mama's name. Because she done raised me. She was my mama and my daddy. She taught me how to shave my legs <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. I'm kidding. I don't shave my legs. But back to the car. It's in, uh, it's in okay shape. It's never been wrecked in the front, which is really nice, except for a little bit right here. You can barely even see it, but on most gears, this is all smashed in and bondo, and it's nice and fresh. It has been wrecked really hard in the back, and I don't know what happened. It was before, before uh, my dad got it. Oh, by the way, my dad gave this car to my, my big brother, Tyrone Hogg. And uh, as a graduation present, he drove it for a good while, and then he parked it in his garage. And it sat there for many, many years, 15 or 20, and then I went and got it from him. And I put a new motor in it, put new tires and brakes and everything, and I've been driving it just like this. Uh, with the seats in it, though, of course. No carpet or nothing, that was all eaten up by rats. And the biggest problem with it right now is that the floorboards have big holes in them. Now I've already cut one out, cut that out, I cut all of the bad stuff out, which you're about to see, and the other side is just the same. So we're going to put some floorboards in this thing. Now the, the deal is, I, uh, I've had this car in storage for a couple years or, or so, and uh, I got tired of paying the storage, so I asked my mama if I could put it in her garage here, and she said, yeah that's fine, but you better get this thing back in storage quick. So I was looking for another storage a few days later. And then my mama said, you know, if you fix that up, I might drive it. And then I could, you might keep it in my garage. So that got me to thinking, well, that'd be a lot better than keeping it in storage and everything. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fix this thing up some. I got these here floorboards off of Craigslist. <laughs> it turns out they'd already been cut up and were too small, but they're, they're close enough. And I think they're for a newer Gia, but it's all right, because I'll make it work. And it's a lot better than, you know, buying new stuff. It's going to work real nice. It's going to look real nice. Once we get the floorboards in there, both sides, then we're going to put some carpet and uh, redo the seats and, and all the vinyl there, the door panels. Now, now, one dilemma I've got, here's the original seats. They've been recovered. I guess my daddy did that. But you can see right there, there is what they were originally. Blue vinyl. So I don't know if we should use the original seats or go aftermarket. Now, I got this seat in here. It's from a Mazda RX-7, and it, it's, it's real good on my back. That's why I put it in there, because these original seats hurt my back when I drove the car. But anyway, we're also going to put a top on the car. We're going to clean up the outside some and put some new trim on there because half of it's missing. Fix some other stuff. I'm going to shine it up and see what it looks like. I don't want to have to paint it. 
but as you can see there's a lot of bondo a lot of scratches but you know what if, if we shine this up that might just make it look cooler if not if it still looks like crap then we'll paint it all right but I'm excited about this project should be pretty easy pretty inexpensive hopefully we'll see the top is going to be expensive but uh, hopefully we can knock this out pretty fast you got to grind to get paid oh, alright then where was I going to go the best I could all the way back to good metal okay gotta get this bitch cut to fit in there now, I don't know how like professionals do this but I do it the redneck way so the widest part is going to be 19 and a quarter inches wide. So I'm going to cut the whole thing to where it's 19 and a quarter wide and then trim down where it needs to be trimmed. Hey everybody, NT Ben came over to help. America. Yeah. What? <laughs> you heard me? I don't know. Oh, damn. He just showed up, I don't know.
You want to join that? What? Join me. No. He yeah. wants me to go to the titty bar with him. I ain't no, got no, no money for all that. Dad, oh, it's an all nude bar. Even worse. <laughs> we love America. Land of the free. We love the people. From shore to sea. Scrapers to the family farms. Some people work in factories, some people work outdoors. And don't forget the people who do. All right, y'all, it's another day. I'm back over here working on the gear. Let me show you how far I got. I got the hole all the way cut out which I think you saw already in this video and then I got that patch panel trimmed down to where it sits down in here now you can see maybe you can maybe you can't but there's a gap under there so my uh, objective for today is to get it cut down enough to where this will sit down flush and there's no gap underneath I gotta figure out where it's hitting. Uh, so it's probably hitting right there. Probably hitting a bunch of places. Uh, it ain't perfect, but it's close enough. What I'm gonna do now is spread some of this on there. It's from Napa. It's called Rust Treatment. Destroys rust. Rawr! Now I used it on the Porsche, and uh, it seemed to work all right. It's raining. <laughs> So uh, we're gonna try it on here. I'm gonna put some of this on there. It, it kind of turns the rust black. I'm gonna use a co couple coats. You just spread it on with an old paintbrush. You don't need a new fancy one. Use some old piece of junk. And then uh, after that dries, I'm gonna primer, hit it with some of that rusty metal primer. And it'll be ready to paint as soon as we get the floorboards welded in there. And I'll just paint everything with black spray paint. So first thing you want to do with this crap is use some gloves, because it's nasty. It'll stain your fingers. Luckily, I have <laughs> thousands of rubber gloves. <laughs> I got a bunch of gloves and massage tables and some mannequins, all kinds of stuff at like a online auction, some kind of medical training place that was getting sold. So I got rubber gloves out the ass. Literally thousands. So I use these all the time. These are like heavy duty ones that they use for surgery. And they got like expiration dates on them and stuff. So I don't care. I'm just working on the car. Bend over, boy. I'm gonna take my rust treatment here from, from the next store. And I'll put it in my cup, my Texas Rangers cup. Texas Rangers are kicking ass. They're playing right now, as a matter of fact, and it's tied with the White Sox. But anyway, I got a whole stack of these. Oh shit. Whole stack of these cups, because you go to the Rangers game and you can buy you a $10 Coke or a $20 beer. Ugh, looks like a milkshake or something. It's not bad, I kind of want to drink it. Do not drink this, y'all. See how long this lasts. Is. Now, you don't have to uh, do a whole lot. Use it, you know, you don't have to put it on all that thick. Get it all up in here. It's pretty cool, it turns purple. And after like 20 minutes, it turns black. That's when you know you're done. And you can put another coat on there if you want. Probably what I'll do, probably put two coats on there. Just for fun. I don't know if y'all can see that. Get it all up 
popping in little rest bubbles and stuff. sure you clean the metal off pretty good. Like I said, I scraped it, I grinded it on it, and then I vacuumed it all up, and uh, what else do? Wipe it down, paper towel, get all the dust out of it. Can. You may want to vacuum it again. Can you see how purple that is? I don't, I don't think it's showing up on the video, but for some reason it's got a nice purple hue. Purple. Maybe I'll paint it purple. <laughs> now, the very last is right up under here. This is a big pain in the butt. But it's important you get where you can't see. underneath here. Now, now this doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want it to last like another 20 years. <laughs> uh, then when me and Neil done touring the world, and I got me some money in a nice farm or some shit, a shop, farm I just want to shop then I can pull the body off and cut these pans out and replace them with real nice new ones all right that's it and I've done good there I used up the whole thing so I'm gonna let this sit until it turns black then I'm gonna lay down another thin coat and then I will fire the camera back up and show y'all what it looks like so we'll see in a little bit All right, this stuff's dry. This is rust, uh, rust treatment stuff. It's dried up, and you can see it looks—it's got like a blue-purple tint to it. But it is—it's still damp. It's been like an hour. But it'll darken up a little bit, and then I think it looks pretty cool. I like the color of it. But yeah, we'll grind it back down to bare metal, around where we're gonna weld it. And we'll weld in the new pan, and then we'll paint everything black after we seam seal around the welds. It's gonna look badass. We're gonna paint the tunnel black. I don't even want to put carpet in it. It's gonna look so nice. All right, y'all. I guess we'll get back with you when it's time to weld. <laughs> 